bow hunting antelope is something that I've really grown to enjoy. Not only does it signify the beginning of a new fall season, but there's a peace and quiet out here on the plains that you won't find anywhere else. They can get to be long, hot days out here. And many times, you won't have anything come by the blind. But I enjoy it. Fresh out the boat in the promised land Twenty-four hours, got a gun in my hand See, it's brush prayer by as I can see God bless manifest destiny Night a hot drinking and a mad a bad man Traded money for my soul and my quick hand Contract pan for some men to be dead Paid me silver to fix it with lead Thoughts are circling overhead There's a number to mind their song Covered in blood and I only see red Living do fast and won't last long Never on the run, never look back, son Live by the gun and you're gonna die young I'm wasted on a cold dark day Smelled their fear from a mile away Charged in fast as the morning broke Thunder and lightning in a cloud of smoke Forts are circling overhead There's a number to my death song Covered in blood and I own the sea red Living do to won't last long Ever on the run, never look back, son Live by the gun and you're gonna die young Ever on the run, never look back, son You live by the gun and you're gonna die young Well, you can see behind me that the sun is setting here. It's the end of night one, which is August 15th. And what an awesome start. I mean, had two bucks come right in. I just set this blind this afternoon. So that's a really good sign. And I saw two really good bucks, like two shooters for sure. Otherwise, I would have shot the bigger one of those two bucks, but there's two, like, really good bucks running around here, and I've got two more days to hunt this trip, so a lot of season left. It's exciting, though.
small hit of dopamine floods in my bloodstream. A notification calls me to act now. Constant distractions divert my attention to the fact that I'm no longer happy somehow. now August 16th. Just had a buck and a doe come in. And the doe watered and the buck stayed about a hundred yards out and made a big circle never did water. So I'm hoping that he's going to end up just coming in on his own here pretty soon. But, good start to the day. I mean, this plan is working. That doe circled the blind. She came right behind me, which is downwind. Didn't smell me. Then ended up coming by at about five yards. Went and watered, but the buck never did come in. <sighs> Maybe next time. Now I had been here earlier in the season and had found two really nice bucks. I knew that if I spent time in this basin, there was a good chance that one of them would show up eventually. Over the years of hunting and patterning these animals, I've found that undisturbed antelope will typically water twice a day. Although it doesn't take them much to be knocked off their normal routine. Any random thing can switch up their pattern or where they decide to water. Well, that was pretty disappointing. I've sat here all day. Got up at 5 a.m. Crawled in here, it's now eight o'clock. Just had two bucks come in that were nervous because of the blind. I think they might have even smelled me a little bit because they circled. But of course the smaller one goes to water and gives me a perfect shot, 30 yards broadside. The bigger one, the buck that I want, kind of circles behind the tank and I figured once the little one watered, the big one would come in. But when the little one was done, 
they just kind of both left and although he was close enough for a shot plenty of times I just trying to film myself here and shooting out a way I'm not ready for I just couldn't put it together That was gonna happen. End of the second day. Even though I didn't get a shot, it was really reassuring to have the buck that close on only my second day. It gave me confidence that this setup would work and to stick it out. Where the pavement ends, on X begins. Well, here I am back in the blind, <clears throat> same spot. It's uh, August 22nd now. It's still really hot. In fact, um, I came down here a little earlier than normal because uh, a fire started about two miles away from where my blind is sitting right now. So I'm here as an extra hand if needed, but also just to kind of monitor everything I have out here. Get it out if I need to, so. Good news is there's still sign around the tank. I mean, there's antelope hitting this thing. Now they've had a week to get used to it. So, Hopefully the big guy shows, man. He's a nice buck. Kind of using water right now just because it is so hot and it's before the real rut activity gets going where they're chasing or might want to decoy or things like that. So I figure right now my best bet is just sit it out, be patient here by water, so. See what happens. I think a big part of bow hunting antelope is the mental game. Being able to sit in the blind for long hours at a time when you can see for miles and can't see a single animal. That can be a little bit of a mind game, whereas when you're hunting in timber, you can always convince yourself that there's something just through the trees where you can't see it. But out here, that's just not the case. The time I had dedicated to this first hunt was over, but I knew leaving and giving the animals more time to get used to the blind wouldn't be a bad thing. And there's no hiding it here, in this spot. It was great to see the rain show up. It was just what we needed to put the nearby forest fires out. It did, however, make hunting over water tough. Suddenly the animals could get a drink anywhere they wanted, 
But I was here, and I was here to hunt, so I was going to stick it out no matter what. Well, I'm back in the blind now. It's actually August 23rd. I didn't come in here this morning because it rained so hard last night. I didn't figure anything was going to come to water at daylight. Now it's poured rain on me since I've been in here and it looks like I'm about to get hit with another blast. There's lightning popping off all around me right now which makes me a little bit nervous. But hopefully it pays off. We'll see. I kept having run-ins with this one buck in particular. And on the evening of August 24th, I thought it was all gonna come together. When the buck passed right by the water source, it knocked the wind out of my sails but it did tell me that I needed to give this area time to dry out. So I decided to head home for a few days until things warm back up again. <sighs> Dang it. Now I couldn't have imagined at the time that this is how things were gonna play out. But if there's one thing I've learned in hunting is you have to strike when the iron's hot. And this buck gave me the perfect opportunity for the spot and stock I had been waiting for. That one did it a little far back. Oh, dude. <laughs> Holy cow. Well, we just got back to the side by side here. All right totally caught us off guard, like we were on our way to the blind, as you can see. This is the buck I've been hunting. And just spot and stalked right up on him, 50 yards away. He had no idea we were there. I hit him a little to the right, the first shot. Hit him in the shoulder. And then he kind of spun around, went up on the hill, and I wanted to fin you know, get another one in him, so I did. Hit him a little back, but I could see blood pouring out when he left. I'm gonna just walk to where I had last seen. You can see my blind right there. That's where I've been sitting. He was standing right over this rise right here when I shot. He just went up over there. There's the second one. No more sitting in the blind. Oh man, I, I don't even know what to say. We gotta get to work on this thing, it's hot. Filmed this buck a ton, watched him chase off other bucks. Kind of be dominant, him and one other buck kind of went back and forth. And so I knew this was a buck that I was gonna wanna try to go after. And uh, just a cool, classic buck, super heavy above the prong here. You can see I'm sweating, totally unexpected deal here. Headed to the blind to sit. It's about 5.30 probably. And ended up running right into this buck between where we park and the blind. Snuck up to him 50 yards. Was able to get an arrow in him. And, uh, did another follow-up shot, hit him at 60, and he barely made it over the hill here and piled up. But what a great goat. I'm still in awe. Like, I expected to spend time in the blind, you know. I would rather spot and stalk these bucks, but trying to film it and do it, 
is really, really tough. Um, so we end up going to the blind a lot, but man, I got sweat in my eyes. It's so hot out here. We're gonna have to get to work on this thing right away and get him on ice. Go hang him and start to skin him right away. Man, I'm sweating. I'll probably grab a bottle of water. I know one thing's for sure. I'll never get sick of sunsets like this and listening to music while taking care of an animal I just harvested. It really brings it full circle and something I thoroughly enjoyed.